Hello and welcome to the VGC 2014 coming at you from Tufts University. That's my, up in Boston. Oh yes, my name is Evan Starr. And I'm Scott Geldzahler. We're just so excited to be here and to be auditioning for this. This is like a dream come true. Absolutely. Pokemon has been a huge part of both of our lives Definitely. for, I guess, the good part of the last decade and a half, really. Ugh, I, I, and when X and Y came out and we just saw the new battles, we... we uh, we had to go for it. We had to audition for this VGC. So this is a fantastic opportunity, and thank you very much from both of us, truly. Anyway, let's get into some battling. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the teams. Today we have a battle between Wesley and Matt, two natives of the St. Louis area. Wesley's team consists of Charizard, Minetric, Garchomp, Gardevoir, Trevenant, and Tyranitar. While uh, Matt's team consists of the uh, ever-used Talonflame, Zapdos, Chandelure, Kangaskhan, Abomasnow, and Mianshaft. Now this is interesting because both players have multiple Pokemon that can Mega Evolve. In fact, Wesley has five out of six that can Mega Evolve, so oh. that's something that could work in his favor. Really, really uh, can trick out Matt during uh, during battles. So. And in addition, the, the weather is also probably going to play a big part in this battle. Oh, of course, between Charizard and Tyranitar and Abomasnow is... Plus, everyone can Mega and hit that weather again. Well, looks like the battle's about to begin. And Wesley begins by sending out Tyranitar and Charizard. And it looks like Matt is going to throw out Abomasnow and Kangaskhan. Oh, all four Pokemon on this field oh. right now can Mega Evolve. That's huge. It's just, it's such mind games that you can play with your opponent, which one's going to Mega Evolve. Uh, and not only that, weather is going to play a huge factor in We're this. We're about to see Obama Snow Snow Warning. Comes That's out interesting. first. Obama Snow normally sn slower than Tyranitar, whose Sandstream will now come out and dominate the field. That must be a very, very slow Tyranitar. And something that's interesting as well is that Charizard, if he, he has Mega Charizard as opposed to Mega Tyranitar, that is Mega Charizard. Why? He, he can, can bring out the sun. Absolutely. And uh, another interesting thing is that Obama Snow or Tyranitar Mega Evolving will re-bring out the uh, whatever weather, weather of their choice. Out. So it's it's uh, really a race to the finish, and it seems as though Charizard uh, would be the fastest of those three, um, so it seems as though the sun would be doomed if Charizard decides to Mega Evolve, but we'll really see. It's interesting because all these Pokemon on the field are all perfect threats to each other, from Charizard's Heat Wave hitting that Obama Snow to a power-up punch or any fighting-type move from Kangaskhan. Oh, and Kangaskhan is going to Mega Evolve! Which means that Charizard isn't going to Mega Evolve, which is interesting. So then we should expect it from the Tyranitar? Perhaps. Unless... Well, Kangaskhan... Oh! Charizard uses Protect! It seems like that... that uh, that, that means Tyranitar's not Mega Evolving either. Tyranitar also uses Protect. It's a scope-out play from Wesley against Matt here. And that's interesting. And it will block the fake out eternal bond fake out. Oh, no. interesting! An icy wind. Icy wind. So um, I'm sure that uh, this this speed drop is going to play into, uh, into it's the battle important later. because with Mega Kangaskhan is such a tank. But everyone takes damage from the sandstorm. It, it needs to be. It needs to be a little bit faster. So now on this second turn, we have we don't have we don't have the possibility of the snow coming back out unless Obama snow is switched out and switched back in. But the sun can come out, and Charizard can just release this devastating heat wave, or if he wants to attack individually. Well, and here it comes, and Mega Charizard, Charizard Y. Y. And so he's uh, going to bring out that drought, going to bring out that sun, really power up all of his special attacking fire moves, which are already extremely powerful to begin with. Due to here the comes the sun, doo 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 doo. <laughs> and the sunlight turned harsh. And, and Obama oh, Snow the uses icy, icy wind. wind. Okay. Must be one fast Obama Snow. Absolutely, and that's going to take down the speed uh, tier from Tyranitar and Charizard, something that will probably play into... Oh, the Hammer Arm! And hammer Arm! And that double paternal bond. I know, it, it doesn't, doesn't even, even need it. One that's the critical, critical hit. hit. Oh, the speed drop. But even still, it, it, it's comparable because we used the Icy Wind last turn. Wow. Wow. Charizard the heat will wave, use the heat wave. That's probably going to take out that yeah, Obama we'll definitely Snow. Definitely take out Obama Snow and does a four really, times weakness. Really big number on the Kangaskhan sun. There. The sun is really, really uh, devastating to that Kangaskhan. It loses half of its health. So now we're in the sun. Uh, the sun, which is going to play up to Charizard uh, very, very well. And Charizard in the sun is a huge threat to anything that doesn't have a rock type move. So if I were Matt right now, I would bring up something that has a rock type move. And we have two Megas on the field, one with Paternal Bond, a new ability in Gen 6. Yeah, explain Paternal Bond to us. So Paternal Bond is, is interesting. Kangaskhan, uh, Mega Evolves, its, uh, its baby comes out and helps fight with it. And uh, its first attack does full Kangaskhan damage, and its second attack 
does, I believe, half damage. Absolutely. And and all of that's really multiplied even further because Mega Kangaskhan has a higher attack than oh, Mega it just goes ever did. through the roof. Uh, and so it, it means that Mega Kangaskhan is one of the biggest threats in BGC. So Matt sends out his Chandler. And it looks like the, uh, Wesley's going to go for his Gardevoir. We know me- that, uh, well, Chandler doesn't have a Mega Evolution, but Gardevoir oh, traces his paternal bond. That is an interesting thing for, for Gardevoir to trace. I would. I'm very interested in seeing that that come into play. What's interesting as well is that that Chandelure, I mean, it poses such a threat to that to that Gardevoir. Oh well, any Ghost type move will really. And be. that Charizard, assuming that that Chandelure has um, Flash Fire, that Charizard should be a little hesitant to use his Heat Blade. Absolutely. Which we know from seeing half damage on Kangaskhan would knock it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, now Gardevoir using Eternal Bond. Very, very devastating foe to either Kangaskhan or Chandler, really. Uh, uh, 1.5 times Psychic could do anything. Charizard, Charizard comes back. Interesting. Interesting play. And he sends out Garchomp. Uh, probably for an Earthquake or a Rock Slide to take out the Chandler. Sucker Punch fails. It was going to be on and that. And the Charizard. Overheat. An Overheat in the sun on in Gardevoir. The sun that on might Gardevoir. take it out. Gardevoir has a high special Doesn't defense. Doesn't even get the chance. To use that paternal bond trace. Really, really interesting because Gardevoir normally has a very high special defense, but that Chandler, I guess with a high special attack, really took it down quickly. So Charizard comes back out. And now now we're stuck because I I mean an earthquake from that Garchomp hitting that Chandelor. That'll take it down. That'll take it down. And that Chandelor. And it'll take out the Kangaskhan as well, I'm sure. It's a it, it's a it's it's a half a half special attack right now after that overheat. Mind you, it's still in the sun. So it's not as bad. Oh, it could still do a devastating amount of damage. Although both uh, Garchomp and Charizard would resist any fire type move that uh, Chandler throws at it. And that's so. again not 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 even thinking about the threat that is that Kangaskhan. Oh well, that Kangaskhan using a Sucker Punch, using a, a return, know- using uh, anything really powerful. Uh, that hammer arm that it showed before on that on that Garchomp could do a heavy amount of damage. The one thing that Wesley has going for him is we know that Kangaskhan is a little slow because it lost that speed from the hammer arm. So if he can take out that Kangaskhan before it does anything, he can spare the life of his Garchomp or his Charizard. I bet Matt was wishing he still had that Obama Snow and Ice Shards that Garchomp would have been just brutal. Oh, well, a guard chomp, I mean, that's that's its one foil. Uh, an ice type move, but it doesn't seem like anyone really has any ice type moves left. Charizard goes for the protect, looks like okay. he's scouting out. Makes sense. And Kangaskhan Kangaskhan goes for the sucker punch, punch fails. fails Garchomp again. This is a substitute. And that's an interesting play from a Garchomp. I find that interesting. The overheat. Why? Mm, because the interesting percent. choice to use overheat on Charizard, I guess in the sun. It was a defensive move on I mean, Wesley's part. That Charizard was a. Uh, is a threat, um, and you're really just supposed to, you know, take him out. Uh, really, it seems that the Charizard can just really attack that Kangaskhan, because there's nothing that it can really do to hit that Chandler. Chandler is actually a perfect foil to Ooh, Mega Charizard. Takes out the, takes out the Kangaskhan. Kangaskhan. Okay. And who's he going to throw in? Ah, Talonflame. Talonflame. Talonflame is a really fun Pokemon that was brought out in Gen 6, and we'll talk about it in the next interim. And it looks like he's going for the Earthquake. The earthquake is going predicted. to miss both Charizard and Talonflame as their fire types, but it will... It won't take out that, that Chandler? That's it. Oh, oh, it's a Focus Sash. Focus Sash Chandler, oh. leaving it with one HP. So Charizard can use Solar Beam on that four times resisted by Talonflame. Um, so it's not really going to do all that money. Oh! He just wanted to get rid of that Chandelure. He predicted the Focus Sash. What a... a gr- I, I guess... I mean, you gotta really be brave to leave that Chandelure out there when you know that the Earthquake is out there. That is incredible. It's a great prediction on Wesley's part. All right, so then we've got a, uh, we got Charizard and Garchomp out on Wesley's side, and Kangaskhan comes back out on Matt's side alongside Talon. Now, one thing that Kangaskhan is just excellent at is substitute breaking. Because with that Paternal Bond, you break the substitute, and and then then you get a little bit of damage. And if they want to put in that substitute, then they have to sacrifice even more of their health. And a, a thing that I wanted to speak about before about Talonflame is that Talonflame has a new ability that's introduced in Gen 6 called... Exclusive to his line. Yes, and it's called Gale Wings. And what Gale Wings does is it takes any flying type moves and it makes a priority. This works with Tailwind in the VGC, it works with Brave Bird in the VGC, it works Roost. with Roost in the VGC, it works with so many different... Being able... I mean, Talonflame is a little frail. Um, that being said, it, it's it, with, with that it's such a threat. Charizard's going to protect. He's going okay. to it's a, again, a scout defensive out. Line on the Charizard. I had never seen a protect on the Charizard. Talonflame line. goes for the Brave Bird on the Garchomp. On the Garchomp substitute, will take out the substitute, and because the substitute's only worth a quarter of Garchomp's health, 
the recoil damage on Talonflame really won't be all that much. And it looks like he's not packing a life life orb. No. Garchomp goes for the Dragon Claw. The Dragon Claw on the Kangaskhan. Trying to take out the Kangaskhan. Oh, the Kangaskhan lives! The Kangaskhan lives in order to use a double, double edge. edge. That's double gonna edge. take out that Garchomp. No, no, oh! it doesn't. It won't because that... That rough, rough skin damage skin takes out Kangaskhan, oh. and even if it didn't, the recoil damage would have taken it out before it could get a second hit. That is and an the sunlight's interesting gone. choice. The sun is gone. We got a one-on-two battle right now between a, an almost full health Talonflame against a Charizard and a Garchomp. So, if I'm not right now, I want to take on that Garchomp because that Garchomp definitely poses a threat. That Dragon back in, Claw. A Dragon Claw, or even a Rock Slide move. It may be packing Rock Slide. Oh, Rock Slide. Um, which, which could do a number of damage. So, if I were not right now, I would be using that Priority Brave Bird, which we've already seen, to take out that Garchomp because Charizard really cannot do all that much against Talonflame. So far, we've seen Charizard's move set, and we don't know what the last thing it's packing is, but it has Heat Wave. Talonflame goes for the Brave Bird. It goes for the Priority Brave Bird, which Who's will be on? take... And it's on Garchomp. That's the end of Garchomp. Garchomp. The rough skin will rough take skin a little damage. and recoil damage. Can Charizard... It, it all depends on what Charizard's last move is here. Well... To uh, see if he can take down. out this Charizard's gonna use the overheat. overheat. Oh, I've never seen a Charizard that packs both overheat and heat wave, but it seems like that'll do a oh, lot of damage. That's and unfortunate. Brings it down. In the sun, this would have well, been game yeah. and over. The sun just left. The sun just went down behind the clouds. It's gonna. It's, it's a, a. It's a. Talonflame's obviously going to move first with that Brave Bird. That Brave Bird's gonna do a lot of damage. If the Brave Bird takes out the Charizard, that could be a win for. Uh, Matt, however, if the Brave Bird does not take out the Charizard, the recoil damage will most certainly take out Talonflame. So this is a do or die situation for Talonflame. He here. could always roost, but this is just this is a nail biter. Um, yes, if Matt if Matt does use the Brave Bird, he uses it. He's going for he Brave goes Bird. for it. He's obviously not packing roost. Then he goes and he hits, hits the Charizard. The Charizard and it takes Charizard it's like a critical, critical hit. hit. Takes down that Charizard. Charizard. Looks like Talonflame's gonna bite it too. Recoil but damage, but that's okay. matter. That counts as a win. In the VGC, it does. That was, oh man, that was one of the best battles I think I've seen in a wow. long time. A full 0-0 zero, zero win there from Matt. Matt, what an incredible battle Very between impressive. these two. We're gonna have to talk about this a little more after. I'm still trying to cool down that critical hit. Oh, wow. What an incredible battle. We'll be right back. And we're back! Oh, so, we it. are back! Yes. And uh, we've got some cool notes uh, to share with we you guys. We have a bit of a post-game analysis. Just, you know, we wanted to show you a bit more of our dynamic, why we're just lovely people. Fantastic people. And uh, your choice for VGC announcers. All right, so we uh, rewatched the battle again, and we wrote down some notes this time, and so we'd like to share some of our thoughts about that last battle with you. So the first thing that I have on this list is weather. Scott, uh, weather. Oh. Weather got a bit of a change this generation. Rather than, than lasting... You know, until the weather is changed, or from from abilities like drizzle or drought, um, weather actually only lasts, I believe, a maximum uh, of five, five turns. turns. Five turns could be eight turns if you're holding the heat rock or the damp rock, but in this case, it didn't happen because. And weather was just such a deciding factor. Well, that sun, if that sun had stayed around like it normally did in oh, fifth generation, angry. fourth generation, then that Charizard's overheat would have decidedly taken out that Talonflame. Absolutely. It would have been a whole different battle. Alas, the sun went away. And so that was really a saving grace for, for Matt in that in that battle. And, and and interestingly enough, and something that we we noticed on, on upon rewatching and, and doing our analysis of this battle, is that um, that Obama snow was very suspiciously fast. Oh my goodness! When it came out uh, and brought out its tail before that Tyranitar's uh, and you sand... know Mega Obama snow, I believe it has a base speed of thirty. Well, I mean, either way, it, it uses the regular Obama speed, which is the same. But uh, what what surprised us uh, a lot was that 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 uh, Tyranitar with with no speed is still, I think, faster than an Obama snow. Absolutely, it's a regular speed. Um, what we noticed was that those... Uh, the, the hail came out first. Uh, the icy wind. Well, because uh, the hail came out first, which means that it was faster. All right, and that was a clue at first, but then the icy wind coming out before the Charizard moved? Yes. In that second turn? That really tipped us off to know that... That's a choice scarf. It was a choice scarf to Bomb Snow, and, 
and and we know that now. So so what's next on our well, list? The next on my list is uh, Kangaskhan's offense. Now this Kangaskhan is actually very different from most Kangaskhans that I have seen in the VGC, just in my practice. This Kangaskhan seemed to me to be a Kangaskhan that wanted to get out there <sighs> and get rid of a threat. It was a whole heck of a lot more offensive than most Kangaskhans that I've seen. Rather than the power up punch, which again with the parental bond just works so well because you get, you get double the attack. double attack. Well, it's you use hammer arm. It's basically an offensive sword yeah, stance. Well, you, you use hammer arm instead, which is a much more powerful attack than power up punch for sure. And again, you lose some speed uh, from from that, you know, and uh, that takeaway. And so uh, I thought it was interesting. Not only did it use hammer arm instead of power up punch, but it used double edge instead of return. And so obviously, um, Wesley or uh, yeah, uh, no, I'm Matt, it was Matt. Matt with the set up gun. his. Uh, Matt set up his Kangaskhan to be a lot more offensive than most Kangaskhans. Really get in there, attack hard, take out opponents as fast as possible. And you know what? It worked really well for him. That hammer arm completely decimated Didn't that Tyranitar. Didn't even need the baby's attack. Nope. Uh, you know, uh, and I don't even know if the power-up power punch maybe could have taken out that Tyranitar. Again, Tyranitar is four times weak to fighting-type moves. But, I mean, we'll never know if that hammer arm did its job. That double edge. Um, took yeah, out a good enough, good amount took of out a good, enough damage that that brave bird could just hit that Garchomp and, that and little take it down. Recoil damage that allowed that uh, town to, to live alive. another turn. Um, and so, yeah, that was an, another thing that we thought was interesting about Matt's team. Uh, another thing that I have is Gardevoir tracing that parental bond was something that I really, really wanted to oh, see. Psychic hitting two times. I, I wonder if maybe he throws out a little baby Ralt little or something. Ralt in front of it using, <laughs> using the double psychic. I mean, uh, it was cut short by that uh, by that chandelier's overheat in the sun. Which, which, again, which is just another thing because, the, j just, uh, I'm sorry to loop back to weather, but, oh my, that, you know, Gardevoir is a very... It can be, at least, a very specially defensive Pokemon. Of course. A and hitting that overheat in the sun... It was too much. It was, it, was, it was too much for that poor I Gardevoir. really, really wish we could have seen that Gardevoir use that parental bond in action, because Gardevoir twice tracing new moves, is, or new uh, abilities, is just, just a really interesting thing for, for us to see in the VGC. That was something that's not seen every day. Um... Maybe, maybe in another battle of this tournament, we'll be able to see a Gardevoir. You know, it's not, it's not that unpopular. Oh, I'd love, I'd love to see it. Okay, so the next thing that I have on this list is it's just Mega Evolution in general and what, and what it really brings to the table. And with the two Mega Evolutions that we saw in today's battle, uh, were Mega Charizard Y and uh, Mega, uh, sorry, Kangaskhan. And uh, what I find best about um, Mega Pokemon is that. Um, the Pokemon Company did something where it took uh, a lot of our old favorites, oh, I love uh, which which really were not all that usable, especially last year, the year before, in the fifth generation, such as Charizard and Kangaskhan, really not very usable Pokemon, and it gave them just enough of a buff to really stand its ground with you know mm. the likes of of Garchomp and Dragonite, you know the, the they Pokemon. really they really did a great job of picking out fan favorites oh, and, and, was... and just and giving them just the, the the little inch they needed to really be competitive. Really, uh... you know, this time two years ago or even last year, really, had someone told me I'm going to use Kangaskhan in a VGC team, I would laugh. I would have laughed. Uh, Kangaskhan, a great Pokemon, didn't have what it takes. Now with that parental bond, it's probably with that one of the huge attack, one of the biggest threats this year, I if think. not the biggest threat. Yeah. Um, so really, kudos to the Pokemon Company on on Mega Evolution. We we would like to take this time to thank you for that. <laughs> um, anyway, the last thing on the list is just that ending, that uh, incredible, incredible ending to this incredible, incredible battle, that do or die scenario with that Talonflame, and then to get the critical hit, that critical hit. But you see, we'll never know what that damage roll was on that. On that Talon Flame Sprayer, we'll never know. I it could have taken it out. We'll never know. We could do the damage calculations, but we don't even know the the uh, individual values, the effort values on either mm -hmm. of those Pokemon. So we really couldn't. do In those. addition, it didn't have the Life Orb, so it likely wasn't as offensive as it could have been. Yeah. Um, it was just. It could have been. It could have had a choice band, though. It was just an out. It could have had a choice band. Didn't use anything but Brave Bird, so. It was just really an outstanding end to just. A, a very interesting and, and such very fun to watch battle. It made me really happy that we chose this battle to commentate on. And and I enjoyed it. Scott, you enjoyed it. I absolutely enjoyed it. And I it. hope anyone watching really enjoyed it. Um, you know, from Tufts University, I'm Evan. And I'm Scott. We'll see you around. Hopefully, we'll see you at VGC. Absolutely. See you in Washington.